Hello learners, I am Mohini Arora, HOD Computer Science and I am here for you to take this session for senior secondary students who have enrolled for Computer Science. Today, in this video session, we will be discussing about data processing concepts. Data processing concepts talks about data and its various aspects of processing. In this particular session, we will be covering concepts of data, information and data processing. Then, we will be explaining various data processing activities. Thereafter, data processing cycle will be discussed in detail. And finally, we will be explaining various data elements like fields, records, files and databases. But before we move forward, first and foremost, let us talk about data. Anything that we see around us that is useful for us is data. Anything that we want to record is data. So, facts, observations, assumptions or occurrences is data. Facts can be representing people like us, things like your notebook, your computer, your ideas, your events constitute data. Data is represented by symbols such as letters, alphabets, numerals or any other special characters. Data processing is an act of handling or manipulating data in some fashion. Any data that we have captured has to be processed and the process through which facts and figures are collected, assigned meaning, communicated to others and restrained for future use is data processing. A series of actions or operations that convert data into useful information is data processing. Say for example, I have to record the marks of certain students. So the marks that I am collecting is data. The result that I am making is processing. So I am processing the marks to calculate the result of my class. So I am doing the process of data processing. The term data processing system includes resources that are used to accomplish the processing of data like in the example that I gave, the notebook, the pencil, the scale I am using to calculate the result including the calculator if I am making a manual result is the data processing system. Next we move on to another term that we will be using quite frequently in this session is information. Data is raw facts as we just discussed. But when that particular data is transformed into a meaningful and useful form for specific purposes, it becomes information. No hard and fast rule for determining when data becomes information. Like for example, for me, my result is the information. For my class teacher, the result of the entire class is the information. So there is no hard and fast rule that this data has become information. It depends from person to person, it depends to situation. A set of letters and numbers may be meaningful to one person but may have no meaning to other. My result for me is meaningful, my result for my sibling may not be meaningful. So that is how the information is. Information is identified and defined by its users. So that is why we say that information is user specific but data may not be user specific. Let us consider this example. When you purchase something, you go to a shop, you purchase something in a departmental store, a number of data items are put together. For example, your name will be asked, your address, the articles that you have bought, the number of items purchased, their prices, the taxes, the total amount you paid. So separately, each of these terms is data. But when we put everything together, this information is the processed result. The entire payment bill that you get is the information and it is the output of the data processing. This is what we will be discussing in this chapter later. Data processing activities, various tools that help in processing data. There can be manual tools such as pencil and paper. They can be mechanical tools such as filing cabinets. They can be electromechanical tools such as adding machines and typewriters. And of course, the electronic tools such as calculators and computers. Each and every tool has got some or the other 
benefit in itself. We have to work sometimes with manual tools, sometimes with mechanical tools, electromechanical tools, but yes, today we are moving more and more towards computers. Why? Because it is lessening our work. Various categories of data processing will be discussed now. These are categorized into collection, conversion, manipulation, storage, communication and reproduction. There are various individual activities involved in each of these categories. Let us take a look at each of these activities. First and foremost, we talk about collection of data. Data can be collected in the form of events, transaction or some observations. This data is then recorded in some usable form. Data may be initially recorded on a paper source, then converted into machine usable form for processing. And again, I'll give the same example to my learners that when you get the marks, you record it on a piece of paper. But finally, it is entered into the computer and you get a computerized report card from your school or from your institute. So the data is collected in a paper source, but then it is converted into a machine usable form for processing. Alternatively, I may also record directly through an input device into my computer, into a machine readable form, that is also possible, that can also be part of collecting data. Data collection is also termed as data capturing or data capture. Next category of data processing is conversion. It is converting the data that we have just collected into source documents to a form that is more suitable for processing. The data is first codified by assigning identification codes, for example, numbers, letters, special characters, etc. Thereafter, when it is useful to codify data, the data requires to be classified into various forms. For example, one may like to arrange accounts data according to the account number or date. Say for example, I want to arrange the bills that have been stored in my computer as per the date they have been punched in. So I would like to arrange them as per my requirement. Hence, a balance sheet can be easily prepared. So this is about the conversion of data. After classification of data, it is verified or checked to ensure that accuracy is there in the data. And after verification, it is transcribed from one medium to another. Say for example, I have made the records of my students. I would like to now store them on a permanent storage, on a hard disk, on a magnetic tape, on a CD, so that if whenever I want it, I can take it back. So data has to be converted into the form such that it is permanently stored and I am able to retrieve whenever I want it. This was about conversion. We move on to the next category of data processing that is manipulation. Manipulation is converting into information. It can be done through the following activities through sorting means arranging in sequential order. I want to arrange the names of my students alphabetically. I am sorting my data. Calculating, making arithmetic calculations. I have got marks of five subjects. I want to calculate the percentage. Then summarizing the data, condensing or reducing into a more concise form and comparing. I want to compare the result of this particular batch with the previous batch. So all these activities come under manipulation. I have collected, I have converted, I have manipulated data. Now I would like to manage the results. So once data has been captured and manipulated, I can carry out the activities like storing and retrieving. Storing so that data is held for later use and retrieving whenever I want, I can take out, I can recover, I can found the data that I have stored. Communication. Any information that I have processed, it has to be shared. It has to be communicated to the end user. And this is the process of communication. It involves transfer of data and information produced by the data processing system to the prospective users of such information. Your parents would like to see your report card. I would like to transfer the data from the computer to the report card so that I can give them to your parents. 
so i am communicating your result to the parents through a printed report card as a result the reports documents are prepared and delivered to the users in my example your parents are the end users who want to take your result and in electronic data processing results are communicated through display units or terminals when i talk about display units i am talking about monitors when i am talking about terminals it can be printers through which the print out of the information that has been processed can be taken out reproduction is to reproduce the copy or duplicate data or information this particular activity can be done by hand say for example you are uh, manually copying the data or by machine by a photocopier or by taking print outs the reproduction of data can be done after discussing all the categories let's move on to the data processing cycle a very important cycle to understand how the raw data is processed and converted to useful information it involves the four functional categories that is data input data processing data output and storage this particular diagram shows you all the activities you can see that the input is received from the input devices or from the storage device that particular input that is received can be collected can be sorted can be manipulated summarized and then sent for communication or reproduction or through the output device to the end user in between that data can be sent for the storage device also so this particular diagram sums up the entire data processing cycle let's now look at various activities involved in this cycle one by one first activity is the input this is the basic activity that is required to record data and to make it available for processing it can also include the steps necessary to check verify or validate the data contents say for example i am entering marks of my student maximum marks are 50 i cannot enter the marks obtained greater than 50 so that is how the verification of data is done and this is the part of the input processing activity itself next step is processing it denotes the actual data manipulation techniques such as classifying sorting calculating summarizing comparing etc that convert data into information next is output it is a communication function which transmits the information generated after processing of data to the persons who need the information to the end users we call them end users and it may also include decoding activity which converts the electronic generated information into human readable form as you all are well aware that your computer understands only machine language and as a end user i would like to have the information in human readable form so this output activity also includes decoding the data so that it can be received in human readable form last but not the least we have storage which involves filing of data and information for future use after discussing the data processing cycle we have next topic coming up which are the various processing operations although this topic is also concerned more or less with the processing cycle but let us have a quick look at various processing operations involved in the data processing activity we have four basic operations input output operations calculation and text manipulation operations logic comparison operations and storage and retrieval operations input output operations are dealing with accepting data from the user through various input devices like keyboard mouse etc and output operations are sending the data to the user through various devices such as your monitor your printers your display screens etc and again this particular operation is making human machine communication possible next we have calculation and text manipulation operations these perform calculations on numbers and also manipulate numbers and symbols that are used in the text next processing operation we talk about are logic comparison operations very very important operations 
These possess the ability to perform logic operations and they perform comparisons. The result of these comparisons are deciding what next step should be followed in the processing. Next we have the storage and retrieval operations. Both data and program instructions have to be stored internally in the computer. Once they are stored, they have to be retrieved whenever I want. So, the storage and retrieval has to be in proper manner so that my data is not lost. I am quite easily able to retrieve whenever I require a piece of data from the stored one. So, this particular block diagram shows you the data processing system. We have the input, we have the output, in between we have storage and processing. So, this is a system that uses data as input and processes this data to produce information as output. The data processing system can be of various types, manual which utilizes tools such as pens and cabinets, mechanical which uses devices such as typewriters, calculating machines and bookkeeping machines and electronic which uses computers to automatically process the data. And we all know that we are more and more moving towards the computerized data processing these days. Now we talk about data organization. I have been talking about that data has to be stored. Data has to be stored so that I can retrieve it whenever I want. So if I want to store data, it has to be stored in an organizational manner so that I am easily able to retrieve it. So, let us learn some terms which are the units of storing data. First and foremost, we have the data item. It is the smallest unit of information stored in a computer file. It is a single element used to represent a fact such as employee's name, item price, etc. For example, I am storing the payroll detail of my organization. So, the employee number is the data item. The name of the employee is the data item. Individually, all these are independent data items which will be processed further to produce the desired result. Next unit of data organization is the field. The data items that we have just discussed, they are physically arranged as fields in a computer file. Their length may be fixed or variable. Say for example, employee number. I fix it as a three character field, say E01, E02. So, it is a fixed field. The number of characters in this field are fixed. So, we call it a fixed field. On the other hand, say for example, name of the customer, name of the employee. No two employees may be having the same number of characters in their name. They may be different. So, you will see that names of the employees will be having different number of characters in each of the values. So, such type of field is a variable field. So, you can have two types of fields in data organization, fixed and variable. You have to decide as per the data that you are storing whether you want to make the field as fixed or whether you want to make the field as variable. Next unit of data organization is the record. It is a collection of related data items or fields. Each record normally corresponds to a specific unit of information. Say for example, record of a student which takes into account roll number, name, marks of the student. Record of an employee which takes into account the employee number, the employee name, his date of joining, say his basic salary. So, this entire information of this particular employee is one record. It can be seen how each related item is grouped together to form a record. Roll number, name, marks grouped together to form the record. Similarly, employee number, employee name, his basic, his date of joining is one record of that particular employee. All these data items are related to each other and they form a record. Next unit of data organization is a file. The collection of records is a file. I am storing the records of all my students in one single file. Similarly, I am storing the records of all my employees in one single file. So, file contains all the related records for an application. 
these are stored on some medium such as hard disk, floppies, your CDs, etc. So that they can be given for permanent storage and retrieved whenever I want. So this slide shows the example of a payroll file that contains all records required to produce a payroll register. So in this particular diagram, you can see that a file is shown. Inside the file, you have records. Inside the records, you have various fields. You can see with the arrow there. And each field is consisting of a single data item. If I take my example back, my student file will be having records of say 30 or 40 students of my class. Each record will be having multiple fields. Say for example, roll number is one field, name is one field, marks is one field. And each field will be having a data item. Say for example, roll number will be a number 1, 2, 3, 4. Name will be set of characters, say for example, Amit, say Amita and marks will be some numbers again, say 20, 25, whatever. So this entire is various units of data organization that help us to store data. And finally, but yes, of course, not the least, we have the database. It is a collection of related files various files grouped together which are related in some manner or another to form a database. This particular database can be used for a particular application, say for example a payroll database, a student database, a library database and so on. After having talking about various units of data organization, let's have a quick look at different types of records that can be made. First, we have the difference between the variable and fixed length records. As the name says, fixed length record, all the records in the file have the same number of bytes. We call such a file as a flat file. We have very rarely, we come to use such files because you will generally find that all the records are of variable lengths, but still, if you come across a situation where you can have all the records of same number of bytes, we call it a flat file and we cannot then modify. It becomes a very rigid sort of a file. Next, we talk about the variable length records. As the name says, the records vary in length. Use of variable length records can be used when I know that the data is not fixed. And this is generally what we have in our day-to-day -day applications. We generally have the variable length records. Next, we discuss about logical and physical records. A logical record contains all the data related to a single entity. As we have discussed before, a student's record logically contains roll number, name and marks. A payroll record as it is given in your slide for an employee or a record marks contained by the student in a particular examination. On the other hand, we talk about physical records. The records which are stored physically on a device are physical record. As the definition says, it refers to a record whose data fields are stored physically next to one another. It also amounts of data that is treated as a single unit by an input output device. Anything that I store on my hard disk is one file, is considered as a single entity. Physically, it is one file stored on my hard disk. You can see in this particular screen, the block diagram that shows that various logical records can be contained on a single physical record. So in this particular example, you can see that various records are placed next to one another on a physical storage medium. So this brings us to the end of the session. In this session, we have learnt, we have defined the concepts of data, information and data processing. We have discussed how raw data is converted into useful information. We have discussed this through data processing activities and data processing cycle. We have discussed the importance of computers in carrying out various data processing activities and how data is stored in hierarchical fashion through fields, through records, through files and through databases. So this brings us to the end of this session. I hope this session was useful to you. You could learn various data processing concepts and their organization. Thank you.
प्रकाशित करने राहों को लोकित करने जीवन ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो मित्रों हम उठे और जागे ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने के हर कोने में नौजवानों के पास प्रतिभा है उन्हें अवसर चाहिए एन देता रहा है युवाओं को अवसर आगे बढ़ने का एन से पढ़ने वाले इन युवाओं ने किया है संस्थान को गौरवान्वित दिव्यांगों ने बनके दिखाया है सबल और आत्मनिर्भर एन के साथ आप भी जुड़िए एन के संग